I guess on that front too, like Kyle Yamamoto isn't producing offensively. Uh, we spoke about it. I think it was after game one or two, how he's still going getting pucks and he's still kind of causing a little bit of chaos. Are you still seeing that? Or do you think Yamamo maybe needs to come down the lineup a little bit and maybe a Warren Fogel can be elevated? Well, I think like whether you put Yamamoto in that spot or you put Fogel in that spot, like, you more or less have the same thing. Like yep. Fogel hasn't necessarily been burying his chances either, but I think that the spotlight's on Yamamoto purely because of the fact that he's on that line yep. and he's not producing. But at the same time, you look at Yamamoto's game and he's in it. He's in mm -hmm. it all the time. And everywhere he's on the ice, he's in the battle, he's chasing down pucks. Obviously that first goal, like maybe there could, be, could have been a little bit more communication between him and Nurse, and maybe that prevents that goal. But outside of that, like he's a tenacious four checker. He's actually fairly physical. Mm -hmm. So you don't necessarily want to move guy, a guy like that out of that lineup. Because once again, like he four checks just as much as Drysaddle does. Oh, yeah. and he gets Drysaddle of the puck. So, or McDavid. So, you know, the spotlight's on Yamamoto, mm -hmm. obviously because of the money that he makes in the spot that he's in but he's really not that bad of an option there. I, I completely agree. And I, I think at one point, at some point too, like what are the expectations for him? Like, are we just expecting him to go out and score on every single shift? Like for me, Yamo has always been that guy who's super streaky. He's either hot or freezing cold. There's really no in between. And he's going to go out there. He's going to hunt pucks for 60 minutes and he's going to get him to one of the best players in the world who had, was on the ice for all what, five goals last night for the Edmonton Oilers. Like, I just don't know what the expectations really are for him. And also, did you find it kind of strange Clem Costin just didn't play yesterday? Like, for I, I get it. Like, the th in the second period, you're chasing the game so much. But I was looking at his stats. Like, he outshot his opponents 3 nothing, 5-on-5. Five five. Like, I didn't really think he made, like, a massive mistake. And even the penalty he took in game three where he, like, held down. I think it was Ayafalo. Like, it's a dumb penalty, but it's not, like, stupid misplay kind of thing you know it's kind of heat of the moment kind of thing he's not just throwing his stick everywhere especially for a guy too who scored such a vital goal and you're trying to get back like just seems like a weird message to send did you see anything from Carson that should have resulted in what happened I don't think I saw anything in that game yeah. um for Carson to be sad I just think it was a, a case of we're down three nothing mm -hmm. um we need to win this game because we do not want to come back to Edmonton down three one um, there was a lot on the line and I think that the, they just decided to go with the big boys yeah. and you know, that obviously it sucks to be staple to the bench, but at, at that time it's, it's a do or die, um, situation and, and you've got two of the best players in the world. And you also got Kane who has produced in the past. You've got Hyman who's produced in the past. You've got some horses on your team that you got to get going and you feel as a coach that they've got to, they give you a better chance to win than Costin did. And that's all really all it was.